from Tuscaloosa. Alabama won the toss. They'll defer, and Texas A&M will receive the kick of Joseph Bullivis. 82. It's cool. We haven't had an under 90 right. in any of the games so far this year. Before the rain shower, the thermometers on the field were much higher, but they it were. must have cooled it off. I got to think it's going to warm back up. It's about to with a kickoff. Fair catch called for by Kwame Etwe, and so they'll bring it out to the 25-yard line for the Aggies as we take a look at the Chick-fil-A lineups for Texas A&M. Starts with this guy. Gary talked about him. Kellen Mond. Nine total touchdowns, three of them on the ground. And the rest of the offense that trots out with him looks like this. Gillespie is the 12th man, normally just used on special teams, the famous 12th man, but he's going to play a lot at fullback as well. He had a block punt for a safety in this game a year ago. Aggies first snap from their own 25-yard line. Travion Williams is the tailback. He'll get the carry, and he'll get blasted right at the line of scrimmage by the Alabama defense. Isaiah Bugs led the charge on that front three, and here's how the tide looks defensively. Little different look because so many guys are playing tomorrow that were on this team a year ago. But Quinton Williams, a redshirt sophomore, everybody's talked about him. He's the anchor at that nose spot, and he's played extremely well so far early in the season for Alabama. Mond in a pistol set with Williams behind him. Second and ten. Trying to throw. Has to throw as he's going down. And it's intercepted by Mack Wilson. <laughs> Quinnen Williams, I think, was the guy that hit Mond. And Alabama's got it just like that. I don't think there's any doubt that Jimbo Fisher wanted to get out of this first series with a punt at the very least. Second down pass. Quinton Williams wraps him up and then he tries to throw it. And did he get it or not? Mac Wilson's pretty sure he did. Does it hit the ground? I don't think so. Looked like he wrapped it with a left hand and then rolled. Nothing there that you could overturn that call. He grabbed it. Of course it will be reviewed. further review. So you try to run inside to show we can run the ball on first down. Nope. Second down, you drop back. Quarterback has it thrown an interception all year, and he forces it. Now, does he? Ha yes, he does. He's got that left hand under that ball, Brad. You called it right. Mac Wilson, who led Alabama in interceptions a year ago with four, and we think he's got his first one right here. This is the best look I think we have. Right about there, I thought it might After hit the ground, but watch him. He moved him. It's an interception. When it was about halfway down, I said, uh-oh, that hit the ground. But no, he moved that left hand underneath it, and he cradled it. What a play. By that line marker. And as Gary said, it hadn't been intercepted this year in the last 120 attempts. And it gives Alabama great field position, obviously, to start work at the Aggie 30-yard line. To Tagovailoa at the controls with Damian Harris behind him. They might go for one right here, and he will. Much like the championship game, touchdown. The same guy. I don't know if it was the same pattern, Gary, but it sure looks similar. Touchdown, Alabama. It had to be different because this time the AM safety was in position. But watch Smith set him up and then go around him. Watch this move. Sets him up and then again a perfect throw and a better catch. How about that? 30 yards, one play scoring drive. How much fun would it be playing for Alabama when you Break that huddle, you know that any one of five guys might get that football. Con on the other side, how would you like to play defense against that? That's right. Talk about low and a hold. Joseph Bullivis in for the point after.
Pretty darn impressive. Extra point is up and good. 50 seconds into the game. First, it was a Mac Wilson interception. And then, as we said, number 13 is not bad luck here in Tuscaloosa. Tonga Valoa, Devontae Smith, 30 yards, eight second scoring drive, seven zip tie. <laughs> we're 10, we're 50 seconds in. <laughs> don't do it. Just okay, don't do it. Mind. Okay, don't do it. Don't. <laughs> Just a week ago was Ole Miss that scored first, remember? Right, yeah. And they were counting out the pace that didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> this kick is returnable. That way from the three yard line. Not going to make it to the 20. Swarmed under by the Alabama special teams. Let's take you back to the touchdown. Two ahead to hold this ball. One offensive lineman over here, Jonah Williams, is matched up one-on-one -on -one to the outside. Watch him take his man and allow a perfectly clean pocket for Tua to just stand in it. Look at how clean that pocket is. To step into it and make the perfect throw. By the way, the catch wasn't too bad either. No, I said the catch might have been better than the throw, <laughs> but the throw was awful good, that's for sure. Every game this season, Alabama's had an opening touchdown drive. Kellen Mond got two snaps on the first series. The second one was an interception by Mac Wilson. And he's all alone in the backfield here. Boy, what a start. Now a delay game. A run, no gain, in an INT, and now a delay a game. You shouldn't have a delay a game coming off the sideline. <clears throat> Travion Williams stretched out as a wide receiver. Mond in an empty backfield right now. One play. First down. First and 15, not the way he wanted to start. If you're Jimbo Fisher, Jerry said, especially on the road. Not the way you wanted to start again after the last season. <laughs> exactly. From the 13, Alabama had a guy jump, but get back. Mon throws short, complete. And it's Courtney Davis who gets it across the original line of scrimmage. Bring up the second down and nine. Anthony Jennings was a guy that jumps in the neutral zone and jumped back and then got the pressure on Mon. Can this offensive line for AM allow Kellen Mon to step into his throws? That's a tall task with these guys up front. Second down and nine. Williams shifts to the side of his quarterback. Goes out in the pattern. Mon comes back across the middle complete. But again, a short gain to Davis. And it'll bring up third down and about four. Nice job by Kellen Mon that time. He wanted to throw the ball to the right. Nothing there. Kept his feet going. Made the throw. So a manageable third down. And they've been good on third down, the Aggies, this season. 55%. That's 12th best in the country. And they get Sternberger involved in this game, the tight end. He's been their number one touchdown maker as a receiver so far with three this year. Mond getting some heat again from the inside. Down he goes. Isaiah Bugs drops him. And it's fourth down. Jimbo went with a tight formation here. Give him a different look. Alabama punched, obviously. Plenty of time to throw. Nobody to throw to at all. Sack. Jennings was in there first, and then the cleanup by Bucks. So Braden Mann will have to punt. And on the other end is Jalen Waddell, a freshman and a very dangerous return man. Nice kick. And Waddle. returnable, though. Yep. Got a backpedal all the way to the 21. And here he comes. Waddle. Across the 40, running out of real estate, but a nice return to the 45. There is a flag down. Mosley tried not to block in the back, but I think he did it. Jamie Mosley, number 16. 
He tried not to. Stuck his hands up in the air. During the return, the legal block in the back on the return team, number 16. That penalty would be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Oh, yeah. well, First down. It wasn't Time even out. a good fake. He it, tried. He tried, but it wasn't even a good fake against he, Wright, number 93. He didn't have to either. It only got him about five extra yards, but the defense. So he only had one play the first time. Just think about that, Ness. He threw that ball 48 yards in the air and never got more than 26 feet in the air. That's a laser shot. Yes, it was. Damian Harris on the carry. And Damian will go for, well, it looks like 4-5 after I thought it was just going to be a couple as we take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And it all starts with this guy. Almost 73% of his completions, 10 touchdowns now, and as you saw, every seven and a half attempts has been a touchdown throw. Oh, it's lower than that now. It is lower than that now, yeah. <laughs> it's improving his average. That's not fair. <laughs> Second down and six. Harris again hitting the backfield. Yeah, it's going to be a face mask, I think, yeah, though. They're going to get a first down. You're right. Um, Matabuke, I think, is the guy with the face mask and, again that's, and it's actually popped off so Damien's got to come out and get a new cage yeah. those front guys that's their challenge today the word for the defense is disruption can they disrupt the timing of this Alabama offense now they disrupted that face mask but <laughs> as we no said in the open face mask defense number 52 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Matabuke is the guilty party. And he got all of this one to actually pop the face mask off the helmet. He did, but he got penetration. If you're looking for a good sign, that's the sign AM wants. Can they disrupt the timing of this offense with that front three, four, five if they're bringing linebackers and take this? It's so comfortable right now for this Alabama offense. Can they put them just off gear a bit. Damian Harris has got to take a break to get his helmet repaired. So Josh Jacobs comes in at tailback for the tide. First down at the 47. Tonga Bailoa fires out in the flat wide open. Devontae Smith for the second time today. And he breaks away to get a first down and quite a bit more. Down to the 37 yard line. When we talked to Coach Saban about Tua, he said he's just not a guy looking for the big play. He takes what the offense defense gives him. He reads his progressions, and he keeps that defense off balance with just his normal everyday throws. That normal throw and run after was good for 17 yards. Herb Smith, the tight end in motion. And Tagovailoa throws out to Smith. And he's swarmed under by the Aggie defense. As we check the rest of the Crimson Tide offense and the three sophomore wide receivers, Judy, Ruggs, and Devontae Smith, who's already got two catches, including a touchdown today. Those guys are something as a group. Alabama's had great receivers in the past, obviously, including Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley and guys in recent years. But as a group, these three guys are pretty good. Jacobs, delayed handoff. And a good, good stop by the Aggies. And it was Terrell Dodson who made the tackle for the Aggies defense that looks like this. And the Aggies coaches said that the front four, led by Kingsley Kiki, have to be strong today against the run, which they were on that particular carry to give the linebacker a chance to make the tackle. And it brings up a third down and long. And Alabama over 60% on the year on their third down conversions because Tagovailoa, quite frankly, is unstoppable on third down, it seems, so far this season. Third and 11. Two has got a scramble. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Intended for Jerry Judy. First incompletion on third down all year. That's right. He's 13 out of 14 now. Yep. Jalen Hurts is warming up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a high standard. Very high standard here. <laughs> So brings up fourth down. And I think uh, Dick Saban will probably punt this, don't you think? Yep, Skyler DeLong is out there, the freshman out of Fort Mill, South Carolina. Rashad Paul is waiting back for AM around the five yard line, but Alabama would like to knock this somewhere inside the 10 without a return. End over end kick. That's knocking it inside the 10 at the one on the catch. 
And it's Henry Ruggs. The starters play special teams, so one of your top wide receivers makes a pretty good catch at the one-yard line. Well, Ruggs is the speed guy. Track 100 meter, and he showed it there. He reads it. He gets down. He was waiting for it. <laughs> How about that? He reads it. He gets down. He was waiting for it. <laughs> How about that? I'll see you when it gets there. <laughs>
Well, he had had four straight completions until this one. Look at just give me a couple three four yards every yard of this game. He had an easy two three yards there. I thought he might have gotten to the first down well, stick. Yeah, but I, I I can say you don't want your quarterback taking a lot of hits. Yeah. Okay, so give me two. It'll be second and two or three yards to go for a first down. He had Raquan Davis tracking him down a little bit. So it's second down and five. I'm not saying I wouldn't have thrown away. I'm saying what he should have thrown. <laughs> Mon in trouble on the inside. This time he does run for it and a whole bunch more. Kellen Mon, he's still going down to the 15 yard line. Well, he knew what Gary said, so he took off for 54. Maybe he wanted more space. This was a called quarterback draw. Designed quarterback draw. Runs through one tackle, and no one was in the middle of the field. Alabama was playing their combo packages, where they're comboing outside, playing man, and all of a sudden, Kellen Mann runs through Williams' tackle, and there was nobody in the center of the field. That's one of the better quarterback runs you're ever going to see because he just wouldn't go down either. Broke a couple of tackles on his way to the 15-yard line. One yard for Travion Williams. Well, we were here in 2012 when a little, little quarterback had some runs against this Johnny Alabama Benzel. team. Yeah. You bet. Yeah, the I've red zone just, this year, there's what the numbers are for AM. Yeah, I've seen just about everything from AM against Alabama. A, a win, a close game where they put over 600 yards, and then they got blown out, too. But it's new with Jimbo this year. Again, can they affect the inside linebackers and the safeties? Those are the new players, the safeties. you got to give them different looks. Second down and nine. Mond has a look at that Alabama front. Play action. Pressure from behind to the end zone. Touchdown, AM. Yep. &M. And it's Sternberger, his fourth it. touchdown catch of the year. You affect the safeties with play action pass. You hold the linebackers and you go to the tight end. Alabama has not played against a lot of tight end offense. A little bit from Louisville, but not to this level. Watch this beautiful play right here. Play action, hold these guys, sends a guy to clear it outside, one tight end, and now you got another tight end going there right down the middle. Beautiful football. What was that 99 yard drive? It was. Extra point by Seth Small is up and good. That's how I'd be calling. I'd be calling those play actions. I'd be attacking those two safeties and two inside linebackers. And then see how Alabama adjusts. Started with the run by Kellen Mond. 54 yarder. And that set him up at the 15. One play later, capping an eight play drive. And as Gary said, 99 yards and a wide open tight end for the touchdown. Aggies were tied in Tuscaloosa at seven. Browns Candace Bergen, all new this week. The kick into the end zone, and Alabama will. Bring it out to the 25. Let's take you back to the touchdown. One more look. The inexperience at safety and the aggressive play from linebacker right here. Watch what happens. The tight end goes wide, and two Alabama players go with him. Mac Wilson and the safety both take the same player. That's the attack point against Alabama. Safeties, linebackers, and then see how they adjust. You said to me during the break, I don't know why more people don't do that. Well, you got to be tough up front, and so far that... A&M uh, uh, offensive line has done enough to keep Kellen Mond clean in the pocket. Najee Harris in the backfield with Tagovailoa on a first down for Alabama from the 25. He scans the field and fires incomplete in and out of the hands of Hale Henches, the tight end. As we get a Zaxby's update in New York, here's Zook. All right, Ness, and it's Urban Meyer's return to the Ohio State sideline, but that offense humming all season. Dwayne Haskins, 7-for-7 seven seven so far, two touchdowns. This one to Terry McLaurin, a 14-0 lead for the Buckeyes. Back to you. Not a bad start, 7-for-7 seven seven and a couple of scores here. A tie game at 7. On second down, play action down the middle, complete. Josh Jacobs all the way to Aggie territory. Doesn't seem fair that Alabama can run the RPO offense. Watch how long 
Tua stays with the play action while he's reading downfield. There's no one. That's just like, you know, a high school throw. When you're that wide open and you can just pitch it like that, that is as easy as it can get. A beautiful RPO there for Bama. Now it's back to Jacobs on the ground, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. That pass play to Jacobs was good for 26. Again, this Alabama team is different than all the others. Last year, Kelvin Ridley, the go-to guy, and why wouldn't you? He's a number yeah, one draft pick, right? Is playing real he, well for the Falcons. You got it. He caught 35% of all the completions. This year, Jerry Judy is, is number one. He only has 19% of the completions. They spread the ball around. Najee Harris off the left side. Probably the biggest of the backs for Alabama. Jalen Hurts on the sideline, former starter all the way up till halftime of the national championship game, and he's played a lot this year as well. And this is game four of this season, and he's already played at three of them. So we'll wait and see if he plays again today. I thought the die was cast when he played in game number two. That was the commitment that Jalen Hurts was going to be at least the backup quarterback until he could win the job again in his mind. Third down and six. Tagovailoa fires out in the flat, complete first down. Henry Ruggs still going. Holy cow, did he take a hit? First down, tied. He's got half of Brian Denny Stadium in his face mask, too. <laughs> For sure. Easy drop off to the outside. Don't have to throw the ball downfield to make first downs on every play. And Ruggs gets his speed up, but he's hit by two players at the same time. I think that was Badabuke, the defensive lineman that came back and got him on that hit. I think it was 52. Matabuke comes back from after rushing the passer. One, for a Donovan targeting. Wilson. Yep. Oh, Donovan Wilson, is it par targeting or not? That's what they're looking at right now. Yes, yeah, so it what is one Matabuke from one side and Wilson from the other. Wilson will come from the top of your screen. Right there. And you hear the oohs and ahs from the crowd here because they're seeing what we're seeing on the replay and on the big screen. I thought Matabuke hit him first and then Ruggs dipped his head a bit when he was anticipating the hit and that's when Wilson's helmet collided with him. I don't think there was intent, but obviously it was helmet to helmet. Yep. A lot of people have talked about. After review, it was tarting against number six on the defense for Texas A&M using the crown of the helmet. That's a 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Ness, there's been a lot of talk that college football should go more to like the NFL rule where there is intent or incidental crown of the helmet there. That time you could see as Donovan Wilson came in, that one hit spun rugs just a bit he got there but when they talked it over they said no we don't want to change that we want to keep it exactly the way it is so that it's a message to all players as you can see wilson don't lead with the head lead with your arms he dipped his head and that's going to cost you every time and it costs him the rest of the game he's been ejected and there goes their captain on defense he's their defensive captain in the secondary senior out of Shreveport Louisiana will spend the rest of the day in the Aggie locker room meanwhile you take the pickup by Ruggs and then the penalty and Alabama's got it all the way to, to the 21 yard line trying to get our Referee Matt Leffler back on the field. We've got him set, and Alabama's got it set at the 21. He was over there giving an explanation to Jimbo Fisher about the ejection and the targeting. Empty backfield for Tua Tagovailoa. Fakes one way, throws a screen to the wide receiver back the other, and Devontae Smith's got his third catch. This was a wide receiver screen. You see on almost every throw, Tua looks off, fakes, 
gives a motion. He sets up almost every throw with either eye movement against the defense or a motion with his arm in the opposite direction. He picks up the receiver and after making that spin yes. move so quickly, he we saw him against it. Vanderbilt yeah. last year do the same thing. Unteachable skill. I've only seen one other guy in my college days do that. He's going to keep it on this one. And he's heading to the first down, and he's got it around the 10-yard line. Who's the other guy that has that uh, was vision? A fellow by the name of uh, at Purdue, Drew Brees. I don't. I kind of lost track of him, though. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing these right, days. Right, exactly. I lost track of him, but he had that special skill of knowing in space where he was, every one of his receivers, and it's unteachable. I think sometime in the first quarter tomorrow, Drew is going to break the all-time completion Crazy. mark in NFL history. By the way. Damian Harris running over Aggies. He might make it to the end zone. He's got a first down at the two-foot line. That is strong running by the senior out of Richmond, Kentucky. Well, Derek Tucker, number four, had a shot at making the tackle, but Damian very subtly made him miss on the play. The officials call timeout here. Talked to Damien yesterday about his career and he had an opportunity to go into the NFL and he says, you know, I haven't really carried the ball all that much. I feel right. fresh. <laughs> Said he wanted to come back and be the leader of the team. He'll get his chance next year in the NFL and he says, I'll go in with a lot of tread left on my tires. Yes, he will. I think they're seeing if his knee touched down before the ball hit around the two foot line. They're going to leave it the way it is, I think. Or did they just time out to measure? They did. They measured its first and goal. They had the first down easily yeah. on the measurement. So first and goal inside the one. Aggies change up their defense at the last moment, bring out some new bodies. Under a minute to go. First quarter in a tie game. Damian Harris got him down here to the two foot line. They fake it to him. Tiger Bowl is going to cruise into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Nobody over there. And two has got his second rushing touchdown of the year. Well, how much has things changed here at Alabama? That would be a play in the past where Alabama would try to show how tough they were. This time, Lester Cotton comes around the side, and uh, it's a walk-in. Nobody within six yards of number 13, who will hold for his kicker, Joseph Bullivus. And everybody on tape from now on will know they got that play. Another look at a one-yard walk-in to Otagavaloa, capping a 75-yard drive in nine plays. And on the sideline, Jalen Hurts says, that's a pretty good job, my friend. 14-7, Alabama. 14-7. Fair catch called for at the one-yard line by Etwe. So that'll bring it out to the 25 as we check in with Jamie. Well, Brad, we are seeing a new Texas A&M team, and Kellen Mond told me it's all because of what Jimbo Fisher instilled in practice the first day he got here. Mental toughness provides this Aggie team the ability to sustain drives like we just saw on that 99-yard drive. In particular, against Clemson, he said when the fourth quarter came around, we felt like we could have played two to three more quarters just because of how hard Jimbo Fisher practices us, and we saw it in that last drive. Yeah, that last drive, and you mentioned it, Jamie, the last time Alabama gave up a 99-yard touchdown drive was 1997 against Houston in a game that was played in Birmingham. Mon off play action. Looking to throw. And now he'll try to get that That's two it. or three yards. That's it. That's what you got to do. When you're a coach calling plays on first down, especially play action plays, you look for a big play. But you depend on your quarterback to get you, you know, three, four yards and get second down so it's an opportunity to move the chains. A half minute remaining in the quarter. Second down and seven for the Aggies at their own 
28 yard line. Possibly the last play of the quarter coming up. Travion Williams behind Mon. They'll hand it to him. Following his blockers, got the corner. Travion Williams, he stepped out of bounds. He's still running, but he's going to have a first down. Best run of the day by number five. Well, I'll tell you, Eric McCoy, the center that time, did a great job coming around the side and helping inside and then taking Mac Wilson. He put his hand on the defensive end, and then he blocked Mac Wilson. He got two guys. He absolutely did. There's where he stepped out at the 41-yard line. But a first down, and the quarter has come to a close. A good one here in Tuscaloosa. Tied leading by a score. End of quarter number one, 14 to 7. Back at Brian Denny Stadium to start the second quarter. Alabama on their home field with a touchdown lead. And the Aggies of Texas A&M with a first down. At their own 41-yard line. Play action. Kellen Mond has all day. Deep middle. Overshot his intended receiver. Would have been a big gainer, but he missed him. And we welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl's on the sideline. Jamie was just talking about Jimbo and his philosophy. Right. You know, they could have folded the 10 after the two plays and an interception, but that 99-yard drive, they're right in it. I think that's the exact point. You know, I mean, you're playing football for Jimbo Fisher is not for the faint of heart. Right. You're, he's going to get in your face, but it pays off. You know, he's tough on you. He demands a lot. You know, I mean, it's like Coach Saban on the other end. He practices tough, as Jamie told you, and then you get to the game and you make plays. I am impressed with A&M coming back. That was pretty impressive, getting off the mat and doing that. Yep. Mond on second down. The pressure got to him this time. He got drilled by Isaiah Bugs. That's the second time Bugs has gotten to him today. When you talk to the coaching staff for Alabama, they go, we might not have one of those guys that's a pure pass rusher, but are all front three guys are good at just about everything they play the run well they play the pass well they're smart and they're strong I was standing next to Isaiah Bugs at practice the other day he was on the sideline I thought man he's a big dude and then Raekwon Davis walked yeah, by yes. I said man he's a little guy <laughs> that happens at Alabama practice that's for sure third down and 16 this is a dangerous spot and it's a bad snap to boot Mon's knee almost touched down as well, and now he's going to do the wise thing, get out of bounds, and punt it. Now the last thing you want is a bad snap when it's third down and a mile. And it was just off to his right. You know, as a quarterback there on shotgun, about half your attention as you catch the ball is downfield. You're just trying to catch that ball out of the corner of your eye as you're reading the linebackers and the safeties. That's why the accuracy is so important. You're expecting it in a certain spot, and it wasn't there. Brayton man to play. Beauty. Jeez. Wow. Waddle back pedals and says this thing's all the way to the goal line and into the end zone. So he kicked it a little bit too far. 65-yard kick, but they'll bring it out. Alabama will have it back on offense. No, she wasn't. Li she's going to put her white high heels back on when she gets to the sideline. Meanwhile, it's 14 to 7. We just thought we'd show you a little color in between plays there. Neither one of those were invited to the Alabama kicker tryouts. A exactly. Couple weeks nope. ago. Four wide receivers. Or to a Tagovailoa from the 20 yard line. I got to put that out of my mind for a while. Exactly. Motion man was Waddle. Tua sets, looking downfield, going to get a holding call as he whips it out to Waddle in the flat. And Waddle made a couple of guys miss, but it's all for naught. As we're going to have a holding somewhere back there on that scramble. Holding offense, number 71, half the distance to the goal. Replay, first down. Ross Pierce Baker, the center, that doesn't happen to him very often. He's a good one. Now we're talking about the receiver that just made the catch, Jalen Waddell. Here was his choices, A&M, TCU, Alabama, Oregon. And he picked up the Alabama hat and everybody happy. He is a speed burner, yep. a great return guy. Made his first catch there 
even though it was negated by the holding call. Back to the 10 yard line and back to the ground game to Josh Jacobs. Jacobs stood up as he picked up maybe three. And the Aggie defense there to meet him. One of journalism's greatest voices returning to television. What will Murphy Brown say first? You can find out with the rest of us when Murphy Brown returns with all new episodes Thursday 9 30 8 30 central only CBS looking forward to the start of a new TV season on CBS. It's not that the reruns aren't good but September and the new ones are a lot better. Let's see if that a &M defensive line can get in there and help this team make a play on two of to a play fake quick throw Waddle again spins away from one guy second guy is going to bring him down nice open field stop Caper Smith made the first hit and then Leon O'Neal holds on another freshman to make the tackle well after you hold Mike Loxley a new offensive coordinator for Alabama this year says we're going to go short and help our offensive line out did not work and you know the two guys that helped on that stop are the guys that took the place of Donovan Wilson who was ejected for the targeting earlier in this game. So good job by those guys to stay home, make the tackle, and force third down and 20. Empty backfield. Damian Harris now is going to trot over there next to Tonga Balor. To us, flipping it to him. Damian's got nowhere to run. They lost more yardage. Nice job by the Aggies defense. Sure was. Here comes a punt, and they're going to get good field position you out could, of it. You could see the lack of confidence in the play calling. They did not want to it to force the ball down throw, downfield. This was a double screen. He could have gone either direction for it. He decided to go to his left, and AM was there. This is a tough spot for Skyler DeLong, too. He's almost at his own end line when he'll take this snap. Rashad Paul is back on the other end. Paul's going to clear everybody out of the way and let this thing roll. Oh, it got a great roll. It wasn't sure going to be the greatest kick, but it does go down to the 43 yard line. You can line. tell the fans did not think it was a good kick when he hit it, and then all of a sudden he got the good roll. So 11 minutes remaining in the first half from Tuscaloosa. Good football game. Getting Kellen Mond's face, and as we talked to Jimbo Friday, he said, "What I liked about Kellen is he accepts coaching. Yeah. I don't think you have any choice when you play for Jimbo, do you? I don't think so." He's in your face. And his mentor on the other side, Nick Saban, is exactly the same way. First down at the 43. Mon going to go deep. No, that's going to be interference. Gonna be gonna be interference. Yes. Uh, Trayvon Diggs. And it's not a bad 15-yard penalty that time by Trayvon Diggs. He was beat. And it was Kendrick Rogers again, the big receiver. He knew he was in trouble. He oh. grabs, he grabs, he's going, please throw the flag. He's got an arm bar there. That's an MMA move, he I did think. More than arm bar, he did everything he could. Pass interference, defense, number seven, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, he got all of that flag. Our aerial coverage is sponsored by State Farm here to help life go right. I just mentioned that Nick Saban will get in your face too, and he just did. Yeah. You know, you got to accept the coaching, but it does pay off. I mean, Jimbo Fisher, head coach, Jamarcus Russell, Christian Ponder, E.J. Manuel, Jameis Winston, four first-round draft picks as quarterbacks. And, of course, Jimbo was Nick's offensive coordinator for four years at LSU. That's where the tree began. The saving tree. Anthony Jennings. Whew. Hello. Just can't run the ball. So far in this game, AM has rushed for, what, 64 yards. 54 of them were on the quarterback draw. Yep. They have not been able to get the running game going. Talk about that LSU coaching staff. Check out this staff from 2004. There's the head coaches, Derek Dooley, who used to be a head coach of Tennessee. Jimbo, Kirby Smart from Georgia, Will Muschamp, South Carolina, Nick in the middle. And he's 12-0, the guy on the right, against his disciples, if you will. Nobody's ever beaten him so far. Mond, quarterback draw again and again. He's into the secondary. Didn't get the first down, but another good run before he's brought down by Xavier McKinney. Such a well-designed this play this time. He follows his tight end, Sternberger, that time. 
and gets it into the secondary. That's been the running game. The quarterback runs. We talked about could AM be physical enough. The only way they've been able to do it on the offensive line is with the quarterback. Mond had a rushing touchdown in this game a year ago. And one in the air. He's been the ground game, as Gary said, for the Aggies, but he got him close enough on third down to try to convert here. Third and two. Play action. Mond is going to keep it again. Not going to get there. Lost a yard. Christian Miller ran him out. Brandon, I think Kellen Mond busted on this play. He needed to stay in the pocket. He had J.C. Sternberger wide open on the play. If he stays in the pocket, he's got the tight end for a big play. Watch the crossing tight end. If he stays there after the play action pass, look what he's got. Oh, wow. That play was designed to go to him, and he ran before he looked. And what could have been maybe a touchdown instead becomes a field goal attempt. Well, you dial one that uh, like that as a coach, you're going to get an earful. Believe me, I've been there. Seth Small trying a long one, 53 yards, and he got it. Big, big kick to put Texas A&M within four. 8.50 remaining in the first half. Seth Small, nothing small about this one. Yeah. Well, he there's might a lot have of other guys that lost to him. The freedom. coaches might have moved on, but the players stayed. <laughs> <laughs> the five stars he keeps getting. Alabama will start at the 25 as we check in with Jamie. Well, Brad, we see it with this Texas A&M team, but Nick Saban confirmed it. He said you can see Jimbo's thumbprint already on this program with the toughness and sustainability. Now, Saban said, did I teach him that? I don't know, but Jimbo did tell us the thing that Nick taught him was how to create a sustained message throughout an entire program and really to impose a psychological disposition from top to bottom, and that is how you create what Nick Saban has created here at Alabama. And Nick, obviously, when he talks about his former assistants he talks in glowing terms and says how happy he is for the success that those assistants have had just to get head coaching jobs much less to win some of those games Najee Harris behind Tagovailoa who loads and fires deep middle complete Jerry Judy in a first down after the 45 he loves to throw that seam route he feels it. He can sense it. He's reading this guy right here. As soon as he breaks off the receiver, he knows he's got Judy down that seam, and he just lays it right in there. And it gets there in a hurry. And they go in a hurry on first down. This time the flip is out to Irv Smith, the tight end. Irv Smith, he's a matchup nightmare for teams, and he's still standing up. Big game. First down, Alabama. Well, Irv Smith is the wild card on this offense for defenses to account for as he crosses the formation with one of those little under boots kind of like a Lane Kiffin play that he featured here all those years and again Alabama goes with tempo and Najee Harris for about four yards to the 30. The interesting thing about Irv Smith is he is lined up in 11 different spots on the field when they break well, they don't break the huddle, but as they break the formation, he lines up in 11 different spots to be accounted for. Wide out screen to Judy, puts his shoulder into Derek Tucker and takes him out of bounds for a first down. You know, I came on talking about could A&M match the physicality of Alabama. So far, they kind of have. They've only, Alabama's only rushed the ball for, what, 30 yards in this game? 33 yards in the game so far. But it's a different team. You know, and back in the day, that would be a, a great stat. But with Tua, it's just a sack. I may have said first down. They didn't get the first down. Knocked out a yard shot. Third down and one. Damian Harris. They fake it to him. Tonga Lamoa steps around the first man. Now he's going to keep it. And he just got there. Got that left foot right at the mark. He had the ball in his left hand. I wonder what kind of spot he gets. He might be short. See how he waved the ball out of his left hand? I think they marked it right about the... 
right on the line. It's very close. They right. called it a first down, though. They got it. They fake the pitch. He lofts it. Caught by Hedges. Touchdown. That's his blocking tight end. Hale Hedges, but on this case, the receiving tight end of a 23-yard touchdown. Well, Leonard O'Neill, number nine, is in for Donovan Wilson. So Mike Loxley says, we're going to attack the new guy. And that's exactly what they did. In practice, they threw this pass about 15 times in individual period. And Danny you knows the quarterback coach kept telling him, take some touch on it. Have some touch. Don't throw it hard. Watch how well he did it. The player they're trying to affect is number nine, Leon O'Neal. The safety. Just out of the camera. You can't see him on the edge. They just lay it over the top, and they got him. Five-yard penalty. Retry. Ball start will make the extra point a little bit deeper. As you get another beautiful look at Hinches hauling that one in for the score. Second try here. Up and good. So with 6.50 remaining in the first half, number 84, his second catch of the year is all, but this is a big one. Yeah, one more for Hedges right here because he doesn't do it often. Gets a block, goes to the end. Play action pass, does the pitch, runs right by the safety that time, and he's... Back here, Jalen Hurts to attack of Aloha, who picked up a huge third down, Gary, on this one. Yeah, I was wondering if this spot, he's got it in his left hand. Watch the official put his foot down behind the marker, and then it goes in front of the marker somehow. I thought that was reviewable, and then the next play is the touchdown to Henches. Capped a 75-yard drive in six plays in just two minutes. How about this one, Gary? Henches has 12 career catches. Four of them are touchdowns. Yeah. That's not bad. Well, that's why I wanted to show it again. He doesn't get a lot of highlights, and that was so. I didn't circle it the first time, but I wanted to give him his due. Returnable kick, but fair catch called for by Etwe, and they'll bring it out to the 25 as we get set to test your knowledge with today's Aflac trivia question. Who are the four active head coaches who have won a national championship? Just because of where we are, you should be halfway to the answer. And I guess I shouldn't have given that hint, maybe. <laughs> sometime in the next 650, we'll give you the answer. All the people at the bars are not listening to us anyway, right? They should be, though. I, they should. They yeah. get a hint. Besides, when you're in a bar, imagine how good we'd sound to those guys. <laughs> First down at the 25. Timeout taken, Before I think, the snap. by A&M. Timeout, Texas A&M. That's a 30-second timeout. So they'll have at Tuscaloosa, where the tide leads 21 to 10. Kellen Mond in trouble. He's going to run out of it, and he's got a bunch of green in front of him. Looks behind him and gets out of bounds around the 40-yard line. Another big run by number 11. One of the reasons that the quarterback can gain yards against Alabama, it's always been the case, is they play a ton of man coverage in the back end. So if you get past that first wave, you've got plenty of open grass. Now that, the, that, that one wasn't designed. Got it to the 41-yard line, though, 34 yards on the pickup. Two on the ground for Mond. He'd like to get some in the air. He's got some here, Travion Williams. Travion to the 35. I thought last drive it was important that AM got points on the board. They did with yep. a long field goal. But the way Tua brought Alabama down the field to make it 21 to 10 like that, I think now, considering the time of this half right here, and Alabama gets it. Back to start the second half. It's a critical scoring drive for AM. Even if it's only a field goal, it'd be a one possession game. Because Alabama's going to get the ball again and then start the half again. Second down and four. Trevion Williams. Wow. That's like running into a wall right there. 
Dylan Moses and Raekwon Davis on the stop. On a stop like that, let's take a pick, peek at the nose tackle. Quinn and Williams right there. They play two gap. He gets two guys blocking him, and he stuffs it, and then cleans it up for the linebacker to make the tackle. You don't always have to make the tackle. Just let your guys behind you do the dirty work. You do the dirty work. They get the cleanup. You got it. That is uh, valuable dirty work, too. The NFL notices that real fast. That's for sure. And a lot of the guys that have worn that helmet in the trenches are playing on Sundays. Third down and three. The pitch. Williams with Jennings trying to track him down, but he got away. And he's still going inside the 20. <laughs> Big run. I thought he was going to drop the pitch, and I thought that might slow him down enough for Jennings to make the play. Watch him bobble it, but then he gets around the edge, and he makes the play. Good call again by Jimbo Fisher. Remember he had the play-action pass for the possible touchdown, yeah. and now on third down he brings out another play to pick up the first down. That's the best run today for Travion Williams. 16-yard pickup. Down to the 18, back in the red zone for AM. That was their eighth first down of the half so far. And we're going to have another timeout. Timeout, Alabama. Alabama this time. We'll be right back. Some of the looks from our Chick-fil-A pylon can, including the flyover during the National Anthem. And this layout catch of beauty by Devontae Smith, the first score of the game, a 30-yard rocket as he laid out for the first Alabama touchdown. But Texas A&M has come back, climbed back in it. They're back in the Alabama red zone with 426 remaining in the quarter. Same formation for the touchdown to Steinberger, be Steinberger before. Isolating the linebackers, they're in that same look with a tight end and an H-back right there. Play fake, they're going for Kendrick Rogers. Incomplete, broken up by Patrick Sertan, the freshman defensive back. Well, you know they gotta like that matchup. Rogers is a big, tall guy, 6'4", 215, 220. He's on the true freshman, a talented true freshman, but he does a nice job staying there and not interfering on the play. Patrick Sertan, whose daddy played a long time in the NFL, and this kid's got the same kind of skills. Just a youngster, but one of those long guys at corner, 6'2", about 204. Second down and 10 for Mon. Extra wide receiver, and now Travion Williams flushes out of the Aggie backfield. Quarterback draw again. This time it only got a couple. It's third down. Spread them out, although they still keep a fullback in the game, but uh, that time well defended by the Bama defense. The Aggies need to get to the eight-yard line for a first down, and that is eight yards away right now on third down. As you look behind Kellen Mond and now right into his eyes. Four wideouts and the tight end and an empty backfield for Mon. They're going to come. They're blitzing. Here they come. Quick throw is batted up in the air and almost intercepted. Mac Wilson, I think, got a hand on it. Alabama lines up as if they're playing their combo coverage. But that time they were coming after the quarterback. Xavier McKinney on the left side is coming on the play. And I think it is... As he throws the ball, was it Mac Wilson that got his hands on it? Yeah. Was Mac Wilson? I had my eyes on McKinney. I could tell he was going to blitz the whole way. Instead of going combo, they brought him off the edge. Seth Small was good from 52. This should be a chipper. A 33-yard field goal attempt to try to make it a one-possession game, and it's up and it's perfect. And with 3:24 remaining in the first half, the lead of Alabama's is cut to eight. This is the Angel Oak, 
Some say the oldest living thing east of the Mississippi. It's weathered countless storms, battered but never broken. It stands for the resilience within us all. of SWAT. Hang on, I'm coming for you. Are back to save the day. SWAT, season premiere, CBS Thursday. Don't forget, coming up in a, about three and a half minutes, the Geico Halftime Report. Adam and Rick and BJ will look at all the action that's happened earlier today. Number one team is right here, Alabama leading by eight. The number two team, as Zook told you, Georgia, a winner over Missouri. That game and a lot more coming up. Geico Halftime Report. I remember for a &M fans, they remember and Jim will remind his team they trailed Clemson 21-6 and came back. Alabama will start from the 25-yard line. A few minutes ago, we asked you to test your knowledge with the Athlete Trivia question. It was... Who are the four active head coaches who have won a national championship? I gave you the hint by saying it kind of goes without saying that two guys are here. Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban. Urban Meyer, Ohio State and Florida. And Davo Sweeney and Clemson are the other guys. There's the group. Pretty good uh, foursome right there. Bad. Let's see what Alabama does. They have two timeouts to work with. They've got a guy with a rocket for an arm right there. And they've got an eight-point lead. On the offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Okay, that's the second time that's happened. One on each team with a delay of game penalty. You can only go when the officials let you go. I don't know what the deal is. Right. It happened earlier against the Aggies, and now it's happened against Alabama. On that play, you see the offensive guys. Lester Cotton is asking, "What's going on?" I don't. What? A... Damian Harris is going. I don't get it. We're just <laughs> waiting for you to blow the whistle so we can start. Anyway, they start deeper, first and 15, and Damian will get the call. And he's trying to get that five back. He got four of it. Got a kick out of. We visited with Deontay Thompson, the safety for Alabama, who came into that championship game when Hootie Jones got hurt a year ago. We said, "How was it going against two in practice?" He said. He scored every time in two minutes. <laughs> twos versus twos, he took it every time. And here he is throwing to his own teammate, Devontae Smith, who caught that winning touchdown last year and won here today. Also talking with Damian and Thompson, we said, how nervous were you going into that game? He said, I woke up about 2 o'clock in the morning and I started throwing up. And Damian said, dude, that's a whole different kind of nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now, Jimbo Fisher is nervous about this play right here. This is a huge play for this A&M defense. The penalty helped get the field position and yardage in their favor. Can they get a stop here? Will Mike Elko bring people? Smith in motion to the slot. They do. Third and seven. Wide open is Damian Harris. And he's still going down the sideline. Damian Harris all the way down to the 20. Well, Larry Pryor does not make the tackle. He just a swing around. He's got the chance to make the tackle. He misses it, but it was a bust before then. You just put the running back out and nobody covers him that easy. Busted play on one of the biggest plays of the day for this a &M defense. 52 yards on the pickup, and now, wow. Tyler Valoa tucks that one in to Jerry Judy, and he broke three tackles to get another first down. There's such value of being accurate with the throw. This throw had to be perfect, and it was. First and goal, Alabama coming right back. Josh Jacobs to the six. Landis Duro made the stop. We'll give this A&M front four credit. They have not gotten pushed off the ball. They have stopped Alabama's running game. You turn on the tape against everybody else, and they're mashing them for yards. That has not happened in this game. Second down a goal. Tyler Malone and the shotgun. 
Josh Jacobs to his left. Tua wants to throw. That is man. Hatches again. Touchdown. Now it's 13 career catches and five touchdowns for number 84. To a Tiger Baloa felt the pressure. He rolls out and Hentges comes into his vision again though. He's on the run and watch how quickly he visualizes it and makes that throw. I like the touchdown ratio for number 84. <laughs> going down, going down. Bullibus, extra point. Up and good. And it was Larry Pryor again that was beat on the play. He didn't make the tackle, and that time he let that tight end pass it by. Who's in for the new season of Young Zelda? Here we go. Our boy genius is back. I'm praying for you. She needs it more than I do. Young Zelda, CBS Monday. Hale Hedges with his second touchdown grab of the day from Tua Tagovailoa on the right, and it's 28-13. Capped a 75-yard drive and. Just two minutes and 16 seconds. Took six plays. The biggest chunk we'll show you again in a moment here was a 52-yard pass from Tua to Damian Harris. He and rumbled down the sideline. And Deontay Thompson, the safety for Alabama, looked across and goes, guys, I've been there before. He did it to <laughs> us every day in practice. a had a bus to start on third and six. That's what started the drive. We talked about the big third down play for this A&M defense. You just swing the back out right here. There's David Harris. Nobody covers him. And now you got a one-on-one -on -one tackle, and it's tough to bring him down. That sets up the next great throw to Jerry Judy, number four. Had to be perfect. Judy barely holds on to it. He does. And then Mike Elko brings the blitz, blitz from to his right. He goes to his left and finds his tight end. What a drive. A&M's got two timeouts with 109 remaining in the half. Quarterback draw again, Mond. And he lost the ball, almost lost the ball. And that run is getting him close to 100 yards on the ground in the first half. Yeah, the, that, that's good. That's good news. The bad news is that's their whole rushing attack. Yeah, exactly. In fact, that's 101 now, I think, after he's brought down right there. Just don't think you're going to beat. Well, no, you're not going to beat Alabama by just running your quarterback. He's got to be able to be effective throwing the ball to him. He's going to run it again behind Trey Williams. Broke the tackle. Does a nice job to get it where he got it, out to the 42 yard line. His tailback was leading the way, so he's well over 100 yards here in the first half. Alabama's playing very safe in the secondary. They'll they'll accept those type of plays right now. So it's first down, and we still got 33 seconds. What do they need? About 25 yards here, something like that. Yep. 23 yards. Mon pressure from behind by Miller throws deep and. Coming back the other way, Patrick Sertan. And the freshman with a big play on the defense for Alabama. You want to see a five-star? Let me show you a five-star, how calm he is playing man-to-man -man coverage. Patrick Sertan never, never panics after the play was over. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 73. 15 yard penalty, first down. Then he sticks out his hands and makes a catch just like any of the good receivers for Alabama. What an athlete. And then the late hit, they've got a great opportunity to score. There he stepped out of bounds, and there's a hit by one of the linemen. 
And when they tack this on, Gary, they're totally. almost in field goal range. They're close. Got two timeouts. They got a quarterback that can throw the ball literally anywhere on the field at any snap. Right now, he is standing on the 50 yard line, getting ready to take the snap. 19 seconds remain. Alabama following the interception. Tonga Bailoa going to throw short across the middle, but it's Henry Ruggs who's on the run. And down inside the 30. Timeout. Take a timeout. Get one more throw if you want it. It's just inside the 29 yard line right now. Just again as Sertan tracks his player one on one. He's behind him. He trusts his speed. And then watch the catch. Just the fingertips of the ball. Beautiful. They just keep re reloading here, don't they? Yeah. The last two years, six number one draft picks off this defense. Basically, their whole secondary is new, but three of the guys already have interception returns for touchdowns that weren't <laughs> playing last year. If that gives you the reloading thing Gary's talking about. So 11 seconds left. Time for one more shot here for Tagovailoa to either Judy or Smith or Ruggs. Or the tight end Smith who's in a slot on the right side. Tua going to come back the other way to the end zone. Incomplete intended for Devontae Smith. He looked to the right then came back and to the left. Oliver had pretty good coverage. He was going there the whole way. He was just trying to look off that safety. It was the same look as his first touchdown pass. And now I think Alabama will go field goal here. Good coverage that time. By AM, Charles Oliver, number 21, did a good job of pushing Smith wide enough on that play. Bullivis, longest this year, 44 yards. He hit a couple last week, but he missed a 38 yarder. This will be a 47 yard attempt out of a Tagabalo hold. The kick on the way to end the half is perfect. Bullivis from 47. And I got a feeling the Alabama fans, so sophisticated, was just as happy with that field goal. 84 in the first half, and with that, and a late field goal to end the half as we get set to start the third quarter. Alabama 31 to 13. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Jeremy Earl Alts on the sideline. And Gary, the good news is if you're Texas AM, you've stopped the Alabama ground game. The bad news is nice. you haven't stopped to attack a below. They're a different team. You know, I thought AM was there. They had that third and six. Uh, they, they bust the, the running back coming out of the backfield. Right. And then that set up another touchdown. And then they throw an interception, uh, tackle a player out of bounds, and leads to 10 points. They were in the game, and now it's going to be a tough climb back. they got to have a stop to yes. start the third quarter, that's for sure, because Alabama's going to get the football to open up the third stanza. Braden Mann with the kickoff. And Josh Jacobs lets it go as we check in with Jamie. Well, Kellen Mond had some major yardage up the middle with some of those quarterback draws. And Jimbo Fisher just told me that those weren't draws some of those times. That's just Mond trying to figure out a way to get some yardage for this offense. Nick Saban not happy with some of those big time plays for AM. But in terms of what Fisher told me about Kellen Mond breaking on some of those plays, he said, I don't think, I think he's seeing everything in creating offense to put points on the board. Now, defensively, he knows you got to get stops big stops against Alabama and some of those big time plays they just got to get a fingertip on the ball and it'll change the way this one goes and it starts right here Jimmy first snap play action Damian Harris on an RPO almost took the handoff from wanted to take it away from two I think as we look at the first half game trends almost perfect 17 to 20 39 a career high three through the air and a cakewalk in on a one yard touchdown Mond 54 of his yards rushing of 102 in the first half and Alabama has outscored everybody big time in the first half this season no difference here today all three wide outs to the top of the screen to the handoffs to Damian Harris and again that front wall of AM's just stands him up and puts him down 
Kingsley Kiki was the first guy to meet him. Well, as you said, this first drive, can they get themselves back in the game? On the first play, it was Dylan Mack that got in there, but this time it was Kiki that stuffed that play and allowed for the tackle. Kiki has moved outside from tackle to defensive end, one of their captains. And I'm sure Drake is watching us today. Isn't the first line of his new song something about Kiki? I know Gary follows all that. Third down and ten. I don't get, you're on your own there. All right. To Tabaloa. First down to Jerry Judy. This is not fair. Matt Abuke, number 52, was right into his face. He throws flat-footed, knowing that he has to bat by time for the route to open. Watch him fall, fall back, fall back, and then deliver that strike man. to the outside. On third and ten, they get that man. strike oh, for man. 16 at the 41. Gonna go back to try the ground. Damian Harris, a tough two, and that's yeah. about it. There's no doubt that Nick Saban looked at that running game and said, can we do anything besides this guy. We know he's good and he's produced everything. Throws the short run off the play action. He's shown everybody why everybody in college football says there's nobody even close to how he's playing quarterback. He's played the entire way by the way if you're wondering if Jalen Hurts has played yet he has not. And Harris is going to be stuffed for a loss this time. And the loss of at least a couple. Well, here's, again, I think Nick Saban went in at halftime and said, guys, uh, it, it's great that we can throw the ball, and two is amazing and all that. We're not going to win a championship if we can't run the ball when we want to, when we want to. And again now, coming out here in the second half, he attempts to run the ball. He challenges offensive line, and it's third and long for his quarterback. Of course, over the years, they've always had two at least really good tailbacks. Whether it was Ingram, Henry, those guys, they've got three good ones or four good ones today, but they haven't done anything so far. Tagovailoa incomplete. One of the few misfires intended for Herb Smith. Charles Oliver was covering. Big stop. A huge stop. And he did it by stopping the running game. You could tell the emphasis from Alabama coming out after halftime was to change up a little bit. Remember, Alabama's not only playing this game, they're playing what they feel they have to be at the end of the year to beat Georgia and Auburn and LSU and, and in the playoffs. They have the big picture during every game of what they want this team to look like. Behind Skyler DeLong to punt. Oh, shanked it. He sure did. Off the side and over to the Aggie bench at around, let's see where they're going to mark this thing. It was kind of like a semi-rugby kick. Whatever it was, it wasn't good. Nope. There's where they're going to spot it at the 48-yard line. Nice spot to start. After stopping Alabama, Skyler DeLong didn't hit it very long for Texas A&M. Hale Hentges, who is getting his Masters, I think, in, in tight end touchdown catches <laughs> after two today for scores. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to Texas A&M and Alabama's general scholarship fund. So they got the stop they needed. There's Hale Hentges. A&M and a 13-yard punt by DeLong. And the Aggies have great field position for their opening possession. Alabama comes out in their nickel coverage. They bring in Shaheem Carter, number five. Mon rolling to throw, and he's just got to get rid of it. Pressure was too great on him. And it was off that slot. Shaheem Carter would put the pressure, blitzing off the slot. You can see the aggressive. Somebody came in with a late, and I mean late flag. And Kendrick Rogers yak in with McKinney and Diggs. Let's see if it's an unsportsmanlike or what happened. I didn't, I didn't see the penalty. I just saw the flag fly in. Very late. It was in the bench area, in the Alabama bench area where it happened. Unsportsmanlike like conduct uh, both ways. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, a number 14 on Texas A&M, and number 15 on Alabama. 
Those penalties will cancel. He called it on Cameron Buckley, number 14, Xavier McKinney. Left side of your screen here, right in the corner. And then there it came. You're right. Yep. I thought it was Rodgers. He came in late for a little yes. extra word, but it was 14. Buckley. So we'll just do it again. Second down and 10. Same blitz. Mon over the middle, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Osmond, who should have had it. And Luke Sertan was covering. Yeah, Jamon Osmond and Kellen Mond are both from IMG Academy. Both out of Texas, but both went to IMG Academy. They were roommates there. And then recruited and signed at Texas A&M. The junior seasons in high school were in San Antonio for Mond. And basically Cedar Hill, Texas for Buckley. Well, oh, they need to keep this thing going on third down and 10. Now Alabama in their dime package. Six defensive backs on the field. Blitz again. Mon's got to get rid of it. He's going down before he can get rid of it. And McKinney, who just had the penalty, comes up with a sack. That's that look that Alabama gives you. Four defensive backs, five defensive backs, and then six defensive backs coming right off the slot right there. No one picks it off. That's a bust for that AM offensive line. Two guys took the defensive end. One of them has to look out and see if the slot comes. You almost play him like an outside linebacker. Xavier might not get yelled at as much on the sideline after the penalty after a 10 yard sack. Man to punt. Another great punt. And still it gets to the end zone though. They're, they're great to look at. Yes. But not when they come out to the 20. Wait, 62 but number, yarder. But number 17 isn't catching it. That's true. Wrong. Right after his press conference. And he said, uh, I'll buy it from you. Of course I'll pay a reasonable price. I'll pay a reasonable price. <laughs> First down at the 20. Tying by low on play action. The quick throw is batted down. Matabuike, I think, got a hand on it on the defensive front. That really is the defense for the RPOs. Those defensive linemen, as they read it, as they play their two-gap up front, if they see the ball pulled out of the stomach, they've got to immediately try to knock that ball down because they're usually short throws. This time, play fake, roll the other way, and fire complete. Judy, first down. Well, Deshaun Kafer Smith, number 26, thought he was in perfect position to defend this throw. He's right in, to the right side of the screen, but to a, that sense of space, that spatial awareness, he knows how much room is behind him. He throws that ball on instincts. That's the word that coach was using the most with him. Yep. His instincts. Let's see how his instincts pay off here. Gonna go deep. And in and out of the hands of Judy that time catchable but a pretty good coverage back there as well. I was telling you Ness that I don't remember anybody we talked about in the first half anywhere close to him but Drew Brees. Drew had it as well. He just understood depth and open field and where receivers were going. He didn't have the strongest arm in the world but he was almost impossible to defend because he could see things open up that nobody else could. That's who Tui reminds me of. To a wide open this time is Irv Smith. Smith inside the 20. First down, Alabama. And Tua just keeps adding to his yardage total. And they use a bunch formation. They're hiding that tight end right there. He goes out, runs a corner. Look at it. He sees that defender right there in the flat. Knows he's got plenty of open space behind. And the ball is let go before Irv even turns around to look for it. 42 yard pickup. And now the play fake and out in the flat to Smith again with a stiff arm. Shed one. Got it down. First and goal. He reminds me athletically of O.J. Howard, doesn't he? The way he moves. I said earlier he's a mismatch problem. And he lines up. I mentioned he's lined up 11 different spots in this offense. They have no idea where he is. Josh Jacobs dragging would-be tacklers down to the three. Second goal. 
How good do you have to be for Nick Saban to change his offense to take advantage of you? As good as two is, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> Jacobs going to walk in. Touchdown, Alabama. Second time today that on a run, an Alabama player was able to just cruise to the corner. Two of first, and now Jacobs here. Watch Hitches right there at the end of the line of scrimmage. He and Jonah Williams get the key block, and that's the corner. From the Chick-fil-A pylon cam, Josh Jacobs coming right into your face to cap an 80-yard drive in seven plays. And it probably is Jalen Hurts time next time we get out here. Extra point is good. With 10.03 remaining in the third quarter. The number one team in the country. Why are they number one? Because they can do a little bit of everything. Jacobs, third rushing touchdown of the year. Spun it for 330 yards and three touchdowns on a 21 out of 28 day. Whether his day's done or not, we'll find out next time they have the ball. As Bullivis will kick. And a fair catch again called for by Etwe. So the Aggies will bring it out to the 25-yard line with 10 minutes and change remaining in the third quarter. Well, we talked about the first drive of the third quarter for Alabama. A&M got the stop. Yes. They didn't get the first yes. down, had to punt. They gave it back to this guy, and you saw what happened 80 yards later in seventh place. Well, you know, they're just, they have no conscience now in offense. <laughs> I mean, they, I, in the offseason, I did a bunch of interviews, and I said, I wonder if Nick Saban will just turn it over to Tua and say, we're going to score 42, can you? And he's basically doing that now. And so far this year, through three weeks, they have scored 57 a game. Right now they have 38. Mon on first down, pressured, steps up, throws short, and would have been a fingertip catch, and it wouldn't have gained a yard anyway. Courtney Davis couldn't hold it. I think that was Raekwon Davis that time, number 99, that, uh, as you said, one of the biggest men in the world playing defensive end tackle for Alabama 6 7 315 20 pounds at a tremendous championship game against Georgia you know in that game Alabama had a, I think they had 12 tackles for loss in that game against Georgia that's pretty incredible Georgia doesn't usually give up that type of plays Mond is all by himself in the backfield on second down at 10. Throws a quick slant, first down throw. And Courtney Davis on the receiving end, brought down by Shaheem Carter. So looking at the stats at halftime, and we, you know, we we know the success that AM had on the quarterback draw and Kellen Mond running. But I think Alabama will live with that. There just wasn't enough passing yards to really stress this defense. They threw for 55 yards in the first half. They couldn't get it done against this defense. Nope. First half from the 36. Mond again got some heat, throws back across his body, and he got it to his tight end. And still running down to the 40 is Jay Sternberger. Well, that's something AM didn't have last year, the Jimbo effect. They got a bigger offensive line. They didn't even have any tight ends, basically, and now they've got the guy that just caught that ball, one of three or four on the roster. And they didn't take a lot of snaps under center a year ago, and that's a little different this year. Jay Shot Corbin in the backfield, a freshman with Kellen Mond in Alabama territory at the 40-yard line. Davis in motion. The throws out to Corbin. And he's got a nice gain out of that. They're pretty high on Corbin. He had 64 yards and a touchdown against Louisiana Monroe last week. And Corbin was one of the players that Jimbo brought from Florida State to Texas A&M. He was a recruit that Jimbo was going to sign at Florida State, and he brought him with him. That's his 19th catch already in the first month of the season. Second and four. Alabama, they're going to bring an extra guy. They do. It's Corbin going the other way, and Christian Miller's going to wrap him up along with Dylan Moses, the two linebackers on the stop. We talked about 
Raquan Davis a couple of plays ago, the big guy. This shows you how many people have come and gone from the defense of Alabama. He came in as their career tackle leader with 82 tackles. I mean, that's just a season for their linebackers exactly. normally. <laughs> Yeah, A&M knows that they got a score here. This is four down territory for them right now. It's third and what, five or six? Yep. They know even if they don't make it, they got to go for it on fourth. And a timeout, 7.43 remaining of the third. Time out as they wave everybody back. That's out the of type the field. of commercials I like right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's my taste right there. Our salespeople, maybe not so much. <laughs> Third down at five. Aggies have to get to the Bama 30 for a first down. Trayvon Williams in the backfield with Mond. Wow, the pocket somehow held up, and he delivers a strike to Buckley, first down. Keaton Sutherland, number 78, the right guard, made the saving play. Watch him come out at the last second and pop the blitzer from the outside, Diggs. That allowed Mond to step into that throw and make it. Great job. Remember we talked about the, the blitz off the uh, slot right. before? That's how you have to clean it up. When they blitz, they're vulnerable. You just got to make them pay for it by blocking them. Down to the 14. Five passes and only one run so far. Here comes pass number six. Down the middle, incomplete. Intended for Buckley again. AM ran a nice little pick play here on the slot, but didn't get it. Watch these two guys cross and pick. If they'd have thrown it right away, they had it. Right now, see? Got it inside. They had the pass to Buckley. That could have been a big play. And there's number 81. That's just the ricochet off the incompletion. Second down. First down markers at the four-yard line. They've been very aggressive blitzing, Alabama has. Will they do it again? Yep. Yep. Off the corner. Mon steps in again to the end zone. Just overshot Sternberger. They had about a half step, and there's a big collision with he and Dylan Moses in the end zone, and Moses has not risen yet. <laughs> you didn't say that, did you? I did. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Got another guy down, too, on the sideline. Look out. Oh, man. Oh, right into the wall. And there's a guy down there, too, that's not feeling so good. Would have taken a perfect throw. Dylan Moses was in good Legal man downfield. On the offense, number 80. The player was covered up and went downfield. Five-yard penalty. He plays second down. You know, it's a rough game when one of your security guys might have an ACL down there. Yeah, I'm, I think Alabama's going to decline this penalty, won't they? Instead of having second and 15, wouldn't you rather have third and 10? Yeah. That's when you wished you had about five more yards on that sideline over right. there. Again, basically the collision is with Dylan Moses and one of the security people and then the wall. Well, really, they're, they're putting, wasn't... what, 300 million into the stadium? I hope they move that fence out a little bit with that money. That might be a good idea. Finally got up out of the back corner of the end zone, and this gentleman uh, that works for the stadium getting helped off. Took a shot to the left knee. We hope he's okay. Dylan Moses, 6'1", 235, and he hit him full speed. Yeah, he's going about 23 miles an hour yes, when he hit him. Exactly. Well, as we speculated, uh, Alabama did decline that penalty, and it's going to be third and ten. Two tight ends, two wide receivers for Kellen Mond, and again, they have to get to the four-yard line for a first down. 
both tight ends are to the left side of the screen. This is that formation that they scored it with the confusion from Alabama before. Only two out of seven, as you saw, third down conversions today. And they're coming again. Mond sets his feet, throws, and Rodgers has it, but he's short of the first down, or does he have it? There's a battle going on with Sabian Smith, who says he has an interception. The headlinesman says no. It was Kendrick Rogers, number 13. Savion Smith jumps it. Rogers looks like he catches it. And then Savion goes for the steal. He was down. By the time he pulled it away from him, he was down. There you see him pull it in. Yep, and he's his got butt, it. His rear end's going to hit the deck before the ball gets stripped from it. And it's fourth down. And they're going to kick the field goal. Seth Smalls hit a couple today already. This one is going to be about 25 yards I gotta, away. i got to say, I'm surprised. I thought they would go for it here. Small from 25. The kick is up and again he is good. That's his third of the day. So they needed seven. They only got three. Still in the game, though, at 38-16. This will bring you the action tonight. Brad Nessler, Jerry Danielson, Jamie Erdahl here at Ryan Daddy Stadium in Tuscaloosa where the Aggies Got a field goal out of that last drive that took him 67 yards in 10 plays. And Alabama will work from the 25-yard line again. Home Depot, smarter, doing Project Smarter, Gary. Well, you, you called one of your other analysts. Up. I it did. I needed help on this. Quick release. Come from a combination of talent and superb technique that, just like a powerful golf swing, starts from the ground up. Excellent footwork puts him in this critical position. Weight back and lead leg set to push upwards off the ground, creating great hip rotation that in turn powers through the shoulders to his arm, resulting in seemingly effortless yet very powerful arm speed. It was a nice idea to call in one of your analysts from a different sport here well, at CBS. I figured there's a lot of similarities from throwing a ball to hitting a golf ball. Stay behind, weight transfer, the lag of the arm, and I said, why not let Peter do this, right? <laughs> Peter's gonna be mad us coming off him. Anybody, nobody, nobody goes off Peter fast. No. I'll tell you right there. Two over the fake pitch, and then a, about a yard gain on the keeper. So it's third down. And here's where the Aggies defense needs to come to life again on a third and eight. Herb Smith, the tight end, is in a slot on the right-hand side. Waddle and Ruggs up there. Devontae Smith to the bottom of your screen. Tagovailoa throws intended for Smith and too far in front of him. One of the rare misses, and so it's a punting situation again. Totally had him. He had a first down. He had what he wanted one-on-one. -on -one. Charles Oliver, the corner was on coverage and just let him too much. That's Dan Enos, the quarterback coach there, talking to him as he came off the field. Rashad Paul waiting back around the 35-yard line in hopes of being able to have a punt return. Last time, Skyler DeLong only hit one 13 yards. This one might much better. about the 42-yard line. It's like a half rugby to the right, and he's almost shaking every one of them. 31-yard kick. Let's get an update in New York from Adam Zucker. All right, Brad, this is a Ford update. A surprise on this leaderboard over on CBS Sports Network. Undefeated Virginia Tech in a jam against Blake LaRussa and Old Dominion. It's 21-all late in the third quarter. LaRussa, three total touchdowns. Back to you guys. Wow. Good for ODU. Here for 17 remaining in the third, an opportunity with good field position for AM. Aggies at their own 42 yard line. Kellen Mond. If there wasn't a holding call, it wouldn't have been a That's sack. That's what I thought, too. And Jennings gets the sack. I thought Jennings got held on the play, and he still got there in time. Watch Jennings, top of your screen, gets held on the play by Dan Moore, number 65, and he still gets there. 
Last year, Anthony had a career high day of seven tackles and a couple of pass breakups against this Aggie group. Big sack there, forces second down and 14. Mon play action. Wants to throw a screen, and that's blown up by Quinton Williams. <laughs> it was blown up by Travion Williams, too, by holding on to Quinton. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, it was quite the collision on that last series for the Alabama defense, but uh, Dylan Moses came back in the game. He seems to be just fine. The security guard for game day, though, his name is Chris Oates. He is up in the tunnel. Guys, I'm waiting here to get the update on him, but I, unfortunately, I think he got the worst of that situation. He no doubt did. Hope Chris is okay. Dylan is third down at 14. Spot you don't want to be in against an Alabama defense. See if they bring some extra heat. Mac Wilson's dancing around. I don't know if they need it. Maybe not. They don't. they don't. Down he goes, and it's Isaiah Bugs. And that's at least his second sack of the day. Yeah, on, on first down, you could see this Alabama defense was charged up. They felt this was now a passing game, and they were going to affect the quarterback, and they did in that series. Jennings and Bugs meet at the quarterback, and will share that sack. Braden man to punt. As Gary said, he's kept it out of Jalen Waddle's hands today, but he's also hit the end zone with some of these bombs he's kicked. Now he got another one. This one's going to be returnable, though. Waddle backpedals to his own five. Flags are flying in. It's going to negate a nifty little return. Waddle doesn't know that. He's still running all the way out to the 25 on the far side. See, the tough spot for a blocker there is you have no idea what direction Waddle's going. So you think you're uh, throwing a legal block, and all of a sudden the defender turns because the ball carrier turns. Illegal block in the back on the return team, number 10. Half the distance, first down. Ale Cajo is the guy, number 10, the middle of the screen. Got it for you there, Ness. Yep, nice one. Yep, that is. Put his hands right in the back. I right, tried to uh, bail you out there, L.A. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> was, wasn't as good as I thought. I tell you the truth. So that backs it all the way up inside the eight-yard line. Two and a half minutes to go. No Jalen Hurts sightings yet, except on the sideline. And Tua Tagovailoa is still at the helm. 21 to 29, a career high 330 and three. Damian Harris, nice step on. Harris cuts it outside. Best run of the day, and the senior goes all the way out to the 43 yard line. Well, I'll tell you, Alex Leatherwood and Jared Williams, number 70 and 74, get great blocks that time, the right side of that line. And Williams is, I'll tell you what, he's a big man, but he is way faster than anybody knows. He started off his career at Alabama returning kickoffs. Gets a breather after a 35-yard gain, and there's a jet sweep for Henry Ruggs. Ruggs with blockers in front, and Ruggs down the sideline, stays in by. Blockers, goodbye. Mr. Ruggs, touchdown. Well, that takes care of the rushing game. <laughs> I think he stepped out, though, at the eight. If he did, he didn't need to. No, Josh Jacobs gets the key block here, number eight. Watch that. Key block on the corner. Got then he gets another one, and the cleater. Almost a step out there. Let's see if he does. Uh -huh. Boy, I don't see that's how a touchdown. Step. That's, that's uh, my fault there. You made the right call. That's where you were thinking, but yep, no, he the tiptoe. He kept it in. Perfect. Great play. Bullivus point after is good. 
the number one team in the country, showing why. With two minutes left in the third quarter, Henry drive. It was a two-play, 92-yard uh, blast, basically. All, all on the ground. <laughs> Yikes. Man, ugly kick. Yeah, kick that very good. So that'll give him a little better field position. Let's take you back to the touchdown, though. Ruggs goes in motion. A little toss inside. Oh, so you get that as a pass. That's what it was right there. Yes. That little uh, boy, I didn't know we could do that. Back in the day, do you know how many more yards I could have thrown? Oh, a for? lot. Just a lot. tossed it to Billy Sims a foot. <laughs> That's why I said it was his fourth touchdown pass. Jeez. <laughs> That's kind of cheap, though. Isn't it, it is. Yeah. It is. At any rate, it's 387 yards and four touchdowns. He doesn't for that need guy. to do that. He can just throw it. There's two of his numbers right on cue. Career highs all the way across the board, or all the way down the board. Blitz on first down, throw. Whoa. Wow. What a hit. Let's check in with Jamie. Guys, during that entire last series, you saw nose guard Quinn and Williams actually in the tent for Alabama. I'm, the team is telling me he's okay. However, I did see him try to leave the tent, and he had to be steadied on his feet. We've seen several liquids go into the tent, so just something to keep an eye on in terms of the defensive line. Okay, good one, Jamie. He's back and kind of working the bike after some hydration. Not quite as hot today as we've had the first month of the season, but still pretty warm here in Tuscaloosa. Mond throws, trying to get it out to Rodgers, who went airborne, and Patrick Sertan was right there with him. One of the parts of the game plan that Jimbo Fisher talked to us about is that he was going to throw some balls down the field that he called 50-50 balls, and we have to get our share, he said. They really haven't. All the 50-50 balls, there's been one pass interference, but the rest have been benign. Nothing. And, of course, Sertan, who was covering on that play, already has an interception today, the freshman. Third down and five as we are winding the third quarter down. Osmond in motion now sets up on the right. Mond. Looks that way, skips one off his hands, intended for Osmond incomplete. Watch Alabama here play their patented combo defense against the two receivers. Watch these two guys work together to cover the two receivers for AM. They give themselves hand signals, now they play the releases. And they switch and take the other guy. Beautiful communication between two guys. It's a Nick Saban stable that he's been running ever since he was at Michigan State. Man to kick. <laughs> he's got a wicked leg. I'll give him that. Sure does. And again, it makes it to the end zone, however. <laughs> Another 60-yarder. And last week, big moment at the end of the game from Jordan Hare. The field goal to end it. 22-21 and Cole Tracy, the hero. And he's part of our news and notes. Urban Meyer returned today. The LSU fans donating to Assumption College to celebrate because that's where Cole played before he transferred to Baton Rouge. And AP's top 10's got four teams on the road today. One of those, uh, two of those, Georgia won, and Clemson is beating Georgia Tech. And it's a new quarterback, Jalen Hurts. And he's going to run it all the way on the first snap. And gets out to around the 23-yard line. So this is week four. And for Jalen Hurts, this is game four. And with the new redshirt rules, that means if he plays again next week, there's not going to be any transfer to any other school to have two years to play. What do you think about it, Gary? Well, I actually think, as I said earlier, the die was cast in game two. Nick Saban looked at Jalen Hurts and said, I got to get a backup quarterback ready. I want it to be you, but if you want to transfer, you got to tell me now because I got to get somebody ready 
Jalen Hurts, by the way, in practice, gets about half the snaps in practice. I've been watching Thursday practice here for over 10 years, and the starter usually gets about 75%. Now they're splitting it a lot differently. You said something interesting to Coach Saban in our meeting. He said, you know, he'd go someplace else, and his skill set, they would work the offense around him. Here he's getting better as a passer, and the coaches all say he's getting better. Yeah. That last pass was pretty good. That Good one's field. not bad. And another first down. Mike. So you can go someplace else right. and play with maybe a good team, or you can stay here and play with great players. Well, the other factor is he wants to be an NFL quarterback. This one's Offense, coming back. Number 66, 10 yard penalty, first down. Jalen wants to be an NFL quarterback, and I think his thinking is. I'm going to spend a year here getting as good a coach from Dan Enos and Mike Cloxley coming in and throwing to these receivers in this wide open offense. If I redshirt, I learn nothing this year. I get no practice. I do get two years, but if I go somewhere, how are they going to use me? Are they going to make me a running quarterback? I don't want to run. I already know I can run. Interesting dilemma, and he decided what's best for him, and obviously it's best for Alabama. Speaking of running, we run out of time in the third quarter, 45 to 16. We'll return to Tuscaloosa after this message and a word from your local station. Coming into Tuscaloosa against his former boss, Nick Saban's not going so well as it has in 12 other times for disciples of Coach Saban. He's 12 and 0 against his former assistant turned head coaches. Jalen Hurts throws out in the flat. And this is Waddle breaking a tackle of the freshman with a nice gain off the first play of the fourth quarter. Welcome back, Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson. You know, we talked a little bit about Jalen Hurts now. He's in the fourth game, and you think he's here to stay, and it's worked out for other guys to just have one year to go someplace else. <laughs> like Russell Wilson and Cam Newton. Here's what I think, though. He, he would really be dogging his own team now. Yeah. You know, if he left now after four games and that's it, I did my four, <laughs> that would really be unfair to his teammates. He's being a good teammate. He's let everybody know this is what I'm going to do. Now he's all in on this season, I believe. Gets what he can there and slips down. And of course, he's the all-time leader for Alabama as far as quarterback rushing touchdowns, 21. And a whole lot of throwing yards, too, over 5,100 and 44 scoring tosses. So he's been a huge part. We told you 26-2 and two as a starter and came out at halftime of the national championship game. It became two a show after that, but Jalen's still out here playing for the tie. Set the throw here. Throws complete. Broken tackle. Judy's not going to get away from the second guy, though. And he's kind of wrestled down and bulldogged down by Terrell Dodson. I think uh, Jalen Hurts has improved his throwing motion and his footwork in the pocket. He, at this point in his career, he does not have that processing of the passing tree as fast as Tua does. A lot, of people, from, a lot of people don't have no, that, right? That's right. It's a, it's a tough comparison. Tua goes one, two, three, four as fast as anyone can. Right? Jalen is one, two and a half. Yeah. Well, DeLong has been to short on his last two punts. This one, he hits down the middle. And it's going to get a great roll, so his average is going to be a little better than the previous couple. Stops at the 12-yard line. And this was a conventional kick. He didn't run to his right in rugby at this time. He just kicked it conventionally. But I'll tell you what, big shoes to follow here for the punting. J.K. Scott. You got it. Yeah. High. 387 yards a career high. <laughs> and no interceptions, so his... Quarterback numbers are off the charts again here today. Well, what could Nick Saban be upset about? He's going to find. He's going to find something. Well, I would think the punter and yeah. the kicker kicking one out of bounds. If you get into a tight game, they've showed a little weakness with their punter and kicker so and lack of a the, running game. The special teams is going to get whacked a little bit. I think so. Can't have too much rat poison this early in the year. <laughs> Mon will draw play that does not open up for Trevion Williams. Dylan Moses just planted him. It's got to be fun to play linebacker behind this defensive line. Yeah. Dylan Moses is just standing there, and the guy comes running right back to him. Nobody touches him, and he can make a tackle right in the hole. 
A couple of backup guys are in there on the defensive front. Fedarian Mathis is playing nose right now. Bugs is still in there, but Johnny Dwight is playing in Raquan Davis position. Mon throws a slant. Nice catch. And a first down to Buckley. Nice hands by Buckley. No pressure. Take it underneath. The zone drops out of the first down area, and you take it for a first down. Out to the 25. One of the other benefits for Notre, uh, excuse me, for uh, Alabama so early in this year, not getting chased in this fourth quarter, is they're going to be fresh down the stretch. Their starters have not played a lot of plays. Mon, the heat on the inside, down he goes again. And Dwight, who I just mentioned, and Bugs and Mathis are all there to meet him. That's an Alabama fan. She's seen all this before. No, she's I think a, she's an Aggie. Yeah, I think so, too. But after you watch this game in and game out, maybe they're getting bored with this stuff. <laughs> that was my first reaction. But the guy <laughs> sitting next to her had an Aggie cap on, so I'm assuming <laughs> she's a Texas A&M fan. Second and 14. Here comes a blitz, a delayed blitz. A throw is true to Davis. And Courtney Davis with a first down. Yeah, and that's exactly what early in this game Jimbo was hoping he could get. Courtney Davis matched up with the slot this time. Shaheem Carter, back shoulder throw, and you get the big chunk of yards. Got it to the 47-yard line, a very close to 26-yard pickup. So we're under 11 minutes. Looking in the direction of Rodgers, throws it to him, Kendrick Rodgers, another first down, I think, with a forward progress. Boy, he, he didn't want to go down, and then he took about four yes. extra hits. <laughs> well, Not new sure defensive it was worth coordinator, it. Tosh LaPoy, when they start making a couple first downs, and uh, the long history of coordinators here, whether it's Kirby Smart or Jeremy Pruitt, as you see Tosh, this year's defensive coordinator, he'll start to blitz. You know he's going to say, I'm tired of those yards. He'll start to bring people now. First and 10 as we approach 10 to play. Here comes Moses off the edge. Just about got to Mon, but he got it away. Almost intercepted by Diggs. Trayvon Diggs playing out there against Courtney Davis, the intended receiver. Like clockwork, make a couple first downs. He brings the pressure, and Diggs get a great job of walling off the defender and only he could catch it. You bring five, good protection, ball out, and watch Diggs wall off the defender and he had a shot for it. Diggs, another one of those big corners, 6'2", 200. Started his career as a wide receiver here and then moved over. Brother of Stefan Diggs, a great receiver of the Minnesota Vikings. Mine, look out, Matt Wilson's got him. He throws it as he hits the deck. Yep. No surprise here. You make two first outs gets Alabama. They're, You're coming. Gonna, they're coming after you. <laughs> Wilson right around the edge right here. Watch Wilson. Stunt and come around. And Max says, you know, I got your first pass and now I got you down. Yep. He did get rid of it, though. He did. Max says, I just like to hit people. I love contact. I wish I was still on the kickoff Kick -off team. team. Yeah. I mean, really. <laughs> Third and ten. Again, Mond is flushed out of the pocket, and uh, that's going to be a horse collar, I think. Well, it or not. On Anoma. There's the flag. You got it. Number nine. Personal yep. foul. Horse collar tackle. Number nine on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. The NBA Noma, number nine, the true freshman. He gets his hands inside the jersey. And that's... They had to just put that in the teaching reel of what a horse collar is. Well, he gets the penalty. I'm talking about 
You talk about a physical specimen, this kid. 6'5, 245. We're watching him at practice the other day. I said, Wow. I like I like number nine. Well, Nick's not gonna like what number nine did, but well, nonetheless, he got a great rush on the quarterback. Yeah, he laid out. I think he did a great job there. That's that's what happens sometimes. He got a tap on the helmet from the coach. Yep. Next time, grab the jersey just a little lower. <laughs> First down at the 28 for the Aggies. Mon going to lose a yard. Moses drops him as we head out to New York. And Adam Zucker with an update. Zook. All right, Ness, winless Old Dominion staying with Virginia Tech on CBS Sports Network. On third and one, Blake LaRusa gets it all to Travis Fulgham. Tied at 28 in the fourth quarter. Old Dominion with the ball. Josh Jackson out of the game for Vautech, guys. Wow. That would be a big hurting on Virginia Tech if they lose that, that would game. Be. You can tell who's winning by looking at the crowd. Second and 11. Comes a corner blitz again. Mon gets rid of it, and he's got his tight end against Sternberger. He had a touchdown catch earlier, and he's got it down to the 10 yard line, maybe the nine. Nice route against Dylan Moss, number 32, sets him outside and gets inside the linebacker. That was the matchup you want. When you come off the slot, that means the inside linebacker has to cover the slot, and you have a good pitch and catch. A 20 yard pitch and catch down to the nine at the eight minute mark. Both tight ends in there right now. Alabama's trying to get one of their guys off the field and somebody new on. And they just did. Mon play fake to the end zone. And intended for Jamon Osmond is the closest guy anyway. Christian Miller, number 47, has been putting pressure on almost every play. Gets him just as he lets the ball go that time. Christian Miller, the SEC defensive player, had two and a half sacks last week against Ole Miss. Yep. He missed almost all of last season. He got hurt in the opener against Florida State. Second and goal from the nine. Mon quarterback draw. Trying to get to the edge. Did. Trying to get to the pylon. And did. Touchdown, AM. I'll tell you, when you beat Dylan Moses that time, number 32, that's a great athlete. And Mon just uh, made Dylan Moses grab air. Called quarterback draw. Watch number 32 right in the middle. He's not clear before snap, but he's got a bead and doesn't even come close to making the tackle. So Kellen Mon is fourth rushing touchdown of the year, capping an 88-yard march in 11 plays. Seth Small in for the point after. It's up and it is good. So Texas A.M. in. Inches a little bit closer. Kellen Mon makes it 45 23, Alabama. Are you standing <laughs> next to the moose? That'd be good. <laughs> you deserve it. I mean. <laughs> Talking about the house at the lake for all those people that are on the yeah, inside. The lake of, house, yeah, that's you. Yeah. Goes out of the corner of the end zone, out to the 25. With 7:36 remaining, 45 to 23. As Alabama tried to run their winning streak at home to 21 games. We talked about guys that just went one year someplace else and did pretty darn good. Yeah. I don't think there's ever been a storyline like this, though. You know, with Jalen Hurts, a two-year starter, took his team to the national championship twice. Uh, what, 26 and 20, two? 26 and two. Talking to Coach Saban, he goes, you know, I'm a loyal guy. This was tough on me. And he has been very fair with Jalen in practice reps. There's Najee Harris on the run, a good one. Najee goes for seven or eight. 
Well, we also asked Damian Harris and some of the other kids, you know, what's Jalen like? Is he any different than he was when he was a starter? Said not one difference at all. Right. Same temperament at practice every day. Same great attitude. Everybody loves him. And uh, it's just a weird situation. And, you know, there's other teams around the country that have something similar. Georgia has a little bit with Jake Fromm and Justin Fields. And Clemson's got a little bit with Bryant and Lawrence. But this is this is two guys that could both start anywhere. Well, I got to say, the next four games, there, there might be plenty of playing time available. Louisiana at Arkansas, down here, Missouri at Tennessee. He might get plenty might, of playing time. He might get two quarters and, exactly. and two against two quarters. <laughs> Two his time today was pretty effective, that's for sure. 22 out of 30, 387 yards. Now, the interesting part is uh, Tua said before the national championship game that had he not played in that game, he was thinking of transferring. Imagine that. And if you're wondering what the future of Alabama is as far as quarterbacks, Tua's little brother threw for 350 yards and two touchdowns last night for Thompson High School in their win over Tuscaloosa County as Najee Harris goes out for a big gain and into Aggie territory. I was just mentioning the final numbers on Tua Tagovailoa on the day. There they are. And those are all career highs. You know, the only one thinking back that came close to this type of situation was when JT Barrett took Ohio State to the playoffs and then Cardell Jones. That's right, ran it JT out. got hurt. And then remember, they went with Cardell and it didn't work yeah. at the beginning of the next season. And he might have been good to stick around a little bit longer and he might be doing a little better at the next level as well. There's a handoff to Harris. Going to lose yardage on this one. Talia Tagovailoa. Last night, he's a right-hander. Thompson High School won 35 to nothing over Tuscaloosa County last night, right down the road here from Brian Denny Stadium. Tua was there and saw his baby brother have four total touchdowns. There's mom and dad who moved from Hawaii to live here in Alabama, so they'll be watching their kids play football here for, well, quite a few years. Depending on how long they stick around. That's, that's literally blood is thicker than water. Yes, sure is. <laughs> it, it, the ocean of Hawaii <laughs> to the waters of Tuscaloosa. Yes. <laughs> that is literally blood thicker than water. Update in New York, Adam Zucker. What do you got, Zuck? Well, Ness, I got that moose you were looking for. It's Jeremy Cox from Old Dominion doing the hokey pokey. Old Dominion getting its first lead of the game on number 13, Virginia Tech. Under 10 minutes to go on CBS Sports Network. Hokies driving right now, guys. Wow. What a game there. I think Nick Saban looked at his offense and said, let's see if you can put this game away. Can you make some first downs here? They've driven the ball five times. They've ran every time. Now it's third and five. What will they do? Quarterback draw? Well, Najee's going to come back and join Jalen Hurts in the backfield. They fake it to him. Somewhat. Uh -huh. the fumble. Yeah. And Najee gets on top of it. It was a similar play to a quarterback draw, quarterback sweep, but AM smelled it out. Nice grab that time by Najee Harris. Yeah. Knocked out of his hand. I'll tell you. Adabuke was a guy that popped it out of there from He Hertz. has been all over the field, knocking down passes, blowing up runs. He's had a really good game up there. The long to punt. Let's see if he's going to go conventional or that little trot to his right. The trot hasn't been very no. good. Those have been the short ones. <laughs> No try to ball. Straight down the middle. Fair catch called for around the 12 yard line. So a little over three minutes remaining in the ball game. AM's got Jefferson City, Missouri. Yep. Hell yeah. Two for two for two. New quarterback in for Texas AM. Guy that was trying to win the starting job at the beginning of the season. Nick Starkle will get the duty here with three minutes to go. AM schedule maps out that they've got a chance to turn this into a good season for themselves. 
keep it on the ground. Talked about A&M's schedule, but Alabama's is what we're going to look at right here. Yeah, I think the question all the way through this open date, I think it's pretty good chance, pretty good chance that Alabama could go 8-0 without their starting quarterback throwing a pass in the fourth quarter. Wow. In fact, I think they might be disappointed if they did. <laughs> Everybody in the country is going, oh, is that something we can, like, Bet on or something? Or <laughs> I think you can. I think you can bet on anything nowadays. Cameron Buckley with the catch out to the 19. And, you know, of course, the finish, though. You know, nothing gets judged by Alabama except for getting into the playoffs and winning. The finish, you know, with L at LSU, Auburn at home, and then, you know, the East, it looks like Georgia right now. Mississippi State also coming here. That November is their season. Darko, they throw one out in the flat, complete. And it's a first down to Jay Shot Corbin, the freshman. Dylan Moses made the tackle. So AM's going to fall to two and two, and they'll probably be one of the better two and two teams in the country, I would imagine. But two pretty good teams they lost to, that's yeah, for sure. I'd say so. Two out of the top five teams in the country they lost to. The number one and the number one and number two when they played it was yep. Clemson. Oh, what a throw. And he dropped it. Incomplete intended for the tight end, Glenn Beal. In the bowl game, that Nick Stark will threw for almost 500 yards, 42 for 63 for 499 yards. And it was a battle for that spot. This was not, you know, a foregone conclusion that uh, Mon was going to beat out Stark. Darko broke a bone in his hand that actually gave Mond the opportunity to play as much as he did last year. And got some valuable experience in some big time games. Starko again complete to Corbin. And Corbin might have another first down. Xavier McKinney made the stop. Here's the Aggie schedule that Gary was talking about. Well, there you look, I mean, these are winnable games. Arkansas, Kentucky, at South Carolina. Those are the three you have to win because after that, it's a load up, okay? I mean, Mississippi State, at Mississippi State, at Auburn, and then, of course, they finish with LSU. Final minute, Starkle. Incomplete intended for his tight end again. And covering was Deontay Thompson. So the final numbers for Kellen Mond are going to look great for his rushing stats, although he lost some yardage. On one of those scrambles, so he had over 100 and then ended up with 98. And yeah. 196 through the air. Yeah, I, I think with this type of offense that Alabama's featuring this year, I mean, it would take a Johnny Manziel, Deshaun Watson type of performance to get this into a close game. Starker wants to throw a screen, got it complete to Edwin. Edwin. Got a first down out of it. Mac Wilson and Trayvon Diggs finally tracking down over there with 45 seconds to play. So Nick Saban's former assistant coaches who are now head coaches will drop to 0 and 13 against Nick. And Nick will go to 6 and 1 against Texas A&M. The only loss was a Kevin Sumlin coach team that Gary talked about with Johnny Manziel a few years ago. Darko throws again, complete underneath to Rodgers. Rodgers stood up by Moses and then buried under a sea of crimson. And there's the number I just talked about. We talked to both Nick and Jimbo about have you, has Nick or our, our coach, have you ever had a team like this? And both Jimbo and Nick said yes, our 2003 LSU team when Jimbo was the offensive coordinator was very similar to this Alabama team in talent. They have some great receivers on that team. Yeah, Michael Clayton, Derby Henderson, Skylar Green, Dwayne Bow. Two of them first round picks, a second and a fourth. A similar style to this Alabama team. So a couple of plays left and timeout taken by AM. And we'll take it as well with 13 seconds remaining in what's going to be Alabama. 
That was the start of what became 45 points and a career day for two at Tagabaloa. And now we're down to a couple of snaps for Texas A&M. Starko back to throw. Incomplete. Intended for Cameron Buckley. Well, you mentioned Clemson, Alabama, one and two when they played them. Georgia today won by 14 at Missouri. And Tennessee, Georgia, Tennessee tonight. How about that? Most Florida. And Tennessee and Georgia's where we'll be next week between the Hedges and Athens. Hope you join us for that one. Could be the final play. Here comes a blitz. Starko throws, completes to Buckley. And the clock will stop with one second. Out. Yep. And the fans are going to react to hey, that. Hey, I have no problem with this. If you're going to practice, you might as well practice against the best. You got your backup quarterback in there. Why not take advantage of every play? And that's what Jimbo did with a timeout with one second remaining. Yeah, he's getting his team ready to play the rest of the season. Coming up tonight on CBS, begins with NCIS Los Angeles and NCIS New Orleans, followed by 48 hours. That's tonight, only CBS. So barring a penalty, we're down to the last snap. And you can bet that the guy on what is going to be the winning side does not want to see his team give up another touchdown right here. They all out blitz last one. Let's see what they do here. Yep. They're just going to bring four. Starko oh. goes down. And it is over. Fumble recovered by Alabama. And they win it 45 to 23. <laughs> Number 95, Johnny Dwight. The last sack, and then he gets to celebrate with his teammates. And the two old friends with the handshake at the end. Another winning performance by Nick Saban and a winning performance by number 13. The tide rolls to 4-0, 2-0 in the SEC. It's going to wrap it up for us for Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl. Brad Nessler saying so long from Tuscaloosa. Final score, top ranked tide, 45, Texas A&M 23. College football postgame show is up next after these messages. So long from Bryant-Denny Stadium.